what she oh, said. She says she wants to tell me. She She's ashamed to tell you. Ah, stop the nonsense. I consider this a vote of no confidence. If your mother can hear, certainly your father. Well, I'll run along to the store. I have plenty to do. There now, there now. Oh, wish Then nothing can be as serious as all that. Sometimes you find them growing in a circle. Then they're called fairy ring mushrooms, like this one. Very good to eat. Isn't that a pretty name for a mushroom? Fairy ring. That word at school, it frightened you, didn't it? You know what it means? Instead, it frightened you. I know it's bad. Well, no, it's not really bad at all. Some people think it's bad just because they don't understand. You see, Patsy, what happened was that a lovely young girl met a handsome young man and they fell in love, but for some reason they couldn't get married. I don't know what the reason was, and it doesn't matter. But their sin is not yours, and they're paying for it terribly. How? Because they haven't got you, sweetheart. Oh, look. This one's called a beef tongue mushroom. It's beauty, isn't it? When's your birthday, Patsy? I was born on Sunday. November 17th, 1887, Sister Josephine said. Sunday's child. Well, of course. Brave and bonny and good and gay. What's that mean? Monday's child is fair of face. Tuesday's child is full of grace. Wednesday's child is loving and giving. And Thursday's child works hard for a living. Friday's child is full of woe. Saturday's child has far to go. But the child that is born on the Sabbath day is brave and bonny and good and gay. But if my parents committed a sin, then they must be bad people. No, they're not. How do you know? By looking at you, Angel. They might have been almost anybody, couldn't they? Mm-hmm. Maybe one was a Protestant, maybe. Maybe. Isn't it kind of an adventure, Patsy? All the other children know who their parents are. But you, you can go to bed and dream any dream you like. And no one in the world can say to you that it's not true. Why, your mother... Your mother, she might have been even a princess. I'd rather have you. Kind of slow, ain't they, Mr. Reed? Oh, well, they are a bit, rather. Drug seems to be affecting everybody. Yeah. Well, I ain't one of these here sheep that run away just because a blooming newspaper says your missus didn't act like a lady. Oh. People are running away, then, huh? Well, if not exactly running, they're staying. <laughs> Neighbor of mine says to me, he said... I'll not mention his name, obviously. No. He says the Reed may be right or he may be wrong. But there must be something fishy about this here adoption business, or it wouldn't be causing all this excitement, now would it? He says to me. What was your reply, sir? Well, sir, I replied to him Mr. as follows. Mr. McChesney, something said, awful! How many times have I told you not to interrupt me in the middle of a conversation, Artemis? But this is important. I just met Mr. Clark on High Street, and he said he was stopped by Dr. Parker and Dr. And Parker. Confound Dr. Parker. Everything is always a crisis with you, lad. Now, please wait until Mr. Hayward and I have finished. I'm sorry, sir. You were telling me what you said to your neighbor. Well, sir, I said to him, I said, whenever a party uses an axe on another party, you can be sure the party of the first part has got an axe to grind. Very good maxim, that. I like a man of independent judgment, Mr. Hayward. Thank you, sir. Well, I'll be getting along. Oh, I forgot. I'll have a bit of scrapple. Oh. Two pounds. Two pounds. <laughs> Favorite to the wife's. Hateful dish, I always say. Uh... Yes, uh, in many ways, a detestable dish. 
All right now, Artemis. What world-shaking catastrophe have you got to report this time? It's about Mrs. McChesney. She's very sick. What did you say? Mrs. McChesney's very sick. Mr. Clark was passing your house, and Dr. Parker called out and told him to get work. And Dr. Mr. Clark started to come here, but he passed me while I was making this with my rounds. So... How is she? What's the matter? What happened? Mushroom poisoning. But that's impossible. Vicky knows more about mushrooms than any woman in all Canada. Of course she does. Still, she's got mushroom poisoning. She's resting now. I've done everything that's indicated. But will she be all right? I've seen worse cases. Uh... Mushrooms, too? No, I don't like them. It's a good thing you don't. I've been praying for Mother. That's a good idea. Pray some more. Huh? Hungry? Good. What would you like? Some cold roast beef. Cold? At your command. Wait right here. Please, God, don't let her die. Because she's the best, kindest, most wonderful mother in the whole world. Please, God... I hope it wasn't the mushrooms I picked that made Mother ill. I didn't think she had enough, so I picked a few to surprise her. But how did I know they were poison? Please, God, don't let her die. And forgive her her sins, if she has any. And forgive my sins, if I have any. And Mr. McChesney's. Also, Harold wants to thank you for his new home. It's been very difficult for me to choose which to receive the silver star and which the gold, because both drawings are very good. But since the contest is so close and I must make a choice, I'm inclined to give the silver star to Edward's lovely pig and the gold star to Patricia's fish. Without lessening Edward's accomplishment in any way, I think Patricia's drawing shows a greater love of her subject and therefore is perhaps more inspired. So Patricia will be on a student for today and her reward will be to feed the animals for me after class. Frere Jacques, Frere Jacques. No, no, Mother, you're coming too soon. Wait till I sing the first two lines. Nod my head and then you come in. Frere Jacques, Frere Jacques, Dormez, Frere Jacques, Dormez, Frere Jacques, Dormez, 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 Dormez,
Uh-huh. And Pegasus, and Father Riley, and Miss Hanover, and the uh, white mice, and the guinea pig, and Mr. McChesney. Well, glad you got him on the list. I was worried for a minute. I say, tell me your sworn enemy, Pat, and the only way you can get back Mother, to the publishing newspaper of your... who are those men with them downstairs? Local politicians. What are local politicians? Oh, they're big fish in a small pond. Oh, dear, that reminds me. I forgot to say goodnight to Helen. No, you don't, Angel. Not in a cold room. There. Good night now, my pet. And sleep well. I'll see you bright and early in the morning. Unremitting, unreconstructible scum. Stone is a scoundrel. What do you expect? You beat him twice for Reeve, you beat him twice for Warden, 